Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now microcontroller boards are great fun and really good for making projects and tinkering and learning. I've got a few boards here that I've kind of picked up over the years. But one thing is these are all different. It is all from different manufacturers, they support different ecosystems, they do different things. And that sometimes can be a bit daunting because there's this great diversity, which is great in the terms of we have choice, but when it comes to the tools, to writing the software, debugging the software, deploying the software on these boards, you're kind of a bit lost at sea. You've got to choose between you know, uh, Arduino and Embed and STM32Cube, and there's loads and loads of different systems out there. Zephyr, you know, which one are you gonna use? Which one's supported by my board? Well, there is a system that kind of takes all of this pain away by adding a level of abstraction and allows you to kind of work with many, many different types of boards and many, many different types of ecosystem, all from within inside one tool. And it's called Platform IO. And today I want to take a look at Platform IO. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So as I said, when you pick a board, you might pick a particular family of processor. This is a ARM Cortex processor, or it might be the ESP32 processor, and there are loads and loads of different types of processors. And then you say, okay, what framework am I gonna use? Am I gonna use uh, Arduino? Am I gonna use uh, Embed? Am I gonna use Zephyr? Am I gonna use FreeRTOS? What, what, what am I gonna do? And then you gotta look at the, the individual board. One board might have a certain clock rate or a certain amount of RAM. Another one might include Wi-Fi, might not include Wi-Fi. And you gotta tweak and configure everything for the individual boards that you're using. If you just go onto a website to try and buy one of these boards, there's just so many of them available, different types of capabilities and features and so on, and price points, of course. Now, if you use a system like uh, Arduino, then you have the advantage, a lot of that is abstracted away, as I was saying. You just say, I've got this board and it kind of works. But there is a tool that adds even more great abstraction and does a lot of the hard work and heavy lifting for you, so that not only can you use uh, Arduino, you can use Embed, you can use Zephyr Artos, you can use uh, STM32 Cube, all from within inside one tool. And when you try to use something new, it will go away and download it all automatically for you, configure it, and then it kind of just works. And that's called Platform IO. So if we just look at some of the numbers here that Platform IO give out, 43 different platforms, 24 different frameworks that would include things like Arduino and Embed, 966 different types of board, 222 examples, and over 10,000 libraries. So the fact that it supports these frameworks, platforms, and boards all in one place makes it a really useful tool. So this is gonna be very much a hands-on approach. What we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take three different types of boards. So an official Arduino board, an ESP32 board, and an STM32 blue pill board, which are really, really cheap, a couple of dollars you can pick them up for. And we're gonna get Arduino code to run on all three of them using platform IO. So let's go over to the uh, desktop and let's start. So the first step is to install Visual Studio Code. So you go over to code.visualstudio.com and here it is, download for Windows. There are of course other versions available. I'm gonna be showing how you do this on Windows. So we will download that. Now the installation is very straightforward. You accept the license agreement. You pick where you want to install it. And then obviously you can pick here whether you want to create uh, desktop icons and so on. Definitely want to make sure this is added to the path as is the default there. And then that will just install. So getting Platform IO is pretty simple. If you just click on the Get Platform IO now, it's not going to give you a download. What it actually does is it tells you what to do for Visual Studio Code. So what you do is you open up the Visual Studio Code Extension Manager and then you type in here, search for Platform IO. So one down there, two here, click install. So let's go over and do that. So here is the extension manager. We click on there. We type in here, platform IO. There it is, the first one. Oh, second one now that comes up here. And now you just click install. So it's installing inside of Visual Studio as a built-in extension. So really, really easy to install. Now it's worth mentioning the install can take quite a while. So we'll just let it finish and then we'll come back in a moment. Now, after you've installed Platform IO, you do need to restart uh, Visual Studio Code, which I have done. Now, the thing is to look here. Here on the left, you can see the icon for Platform IO. That will give you a quick access to a whole bunch of things. But where you really want to go is the PIO Home. Now, you can get to there uh, by clicking on Open, which brings up the PIO Home, 
or if you look down here in the bottom left hand corner there's a tiny little house okay so that's actually the pio home platform io home so you can click on that to get to exactly the same page now here is where you want to start doing your work on the left hand side home projects as existing projects we've already got boards now this is where interesting this is where you can search to see whether the board you've got is supported let's say i've got the mkr 1000 which is an, uh, an official arduino board yes there it is it's supported and it supports the arduino framework but i've also got and we'll be looking at this soon i've also got a blue pill which of course is the stm 32 uh, chips and look at this if you've got a blue pill it supports one two three four five six different frameworks so just here inside this one tool i can program the blue pill not only with arduino but also with a whole bunch of other stuff including stm32 cube which of course is the libraries provided by uh, st electronics themselves now I've also got, for example, a micro bit. I did a review of that a few years ago. So here's a micro bit. And again, look at this. It supports Arduino Embed and Zephyr RTOS. So as you can see in all these cases, there's a whole bunch of frameworks all supported by these boards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a very simple Arduino program, flashes an LED on and off, and then we're going to use it on different boards all from inside platform IO. Okay, so I'm going to start with the MKR1000, which of course is an actual official Arduino board. And so what we're going to do now is you can go to a home and you can say, let's start a new project. And we'll call this project just, you know, mega test. And why not indeed? And we're going to start, as I said, with the MKR1000. So you can select that there. And we want to run with Arduino. And so that will go ahead and create the project. Now, one thing to note, when you use a new framework or you use a new uh, kind of um, system, for example, if you switch over from Arduino to uh, the uh, STM32 chips, this uh, project creation can take a few minutes because it downloads all the support files. So when you just, it unfortunately, doesn't give a progress. That's the big thing. But when it just says, please wait, just please wait. I've made the mistake of being impatient before. Just wait and it will come up in a moment with everything that it needs. And there we go, that finished. And over here on the left now, we can see in the Explorer mega test our project and the main code is under the source and main.cpp. And as you can see, that looks like a fairly standard Arduino project set up and loop. So let's replace that with the classic blinky to blink the onboard LED. And then we will just compile that and load it onto our Arduino board. Okay, so here is the fairly standard uh, Blinky program for Arduino. The only difference in this and maybe a normal Arduino program is we have this include arduino.h at the top here, which tells platform IO which, um, which kind of libraries we want to use. Pin mode, this is an Arduino call. Uh, set the uh, LED, built-in LED to be an output. Digital write high, wait one second digital right low, basically on, off, on, off with a second delay between each one. So this is an Arduino program written inside of platform IO and we're connected to an Arduino board. Now, right down here at the bottom, look at this. There's this tick and this kind of upload thing. Tick will just do a compile, upload will do a compile and then an upload if it's required. So let's just hit the upload button to make sure that it actually compiles. I haven't got any mistakes. No, that looks pretty good. Yep, great. And now we can do the upload, which will upload it onto the board. And there we go. It's just building in release mode, checking all that. Yes, it's okay. And then it should do, there we go. The stuff going across, it's been uploaded. So now here on my board, I have a flashing LED. Okay, next I want to move away from my official Arduino board to an ESP32 board. These are very popular, very cheap, come with things like built-in Wi-Fi. Now, they don't affix not an official Arduino board, so there are some libraries that allow you to compile Arduino. Now, they're all built into Platform I.O. But here's the catch. Normally, you'd have to update the firmware on this board so that it understands the download protocol for the Arduino IDE. But in fact, with Platform IO, Platform IO allows you to use different systems to download the same program. So it actually understands how to flash uh, ESP32 boards without you having to change the firmware. So this board here is fresh out of the packet. It's never been upgraded. It's never been had anything changed. It's actually out of the packet and I'm gonna use it straight away now with platform IO. So let's see how you do that. So if we go over now to here and we were 
to look for that, we can go to uh, boards and we can now look for the ESP32. Now there are uh, lots of them available. The one I've got is this. Uh, now, if there is not enough, if it's not, if the list is too short here, you can just change this to say, show me a thousand, and then we can scroll down very quick. Now I have the Do It ESP dev kit version one. Now when you click on that, you'll actually get a web page comes up on the platform IO website and it tells you this little bit of information here. Look at this. To use this board, you need to add these options to the platform io.ini file. So I'm just gonna cut and paste that. And now we're gonna go back into Visual Studio. And here on the left, you can see there is a platform io.ini file. Now at the moment, it's got the MKR 1000 in there. So what we can now do is add in a second board so we've now added in the ESP32. The only thing you need to add in extra is which framework we're using. So we need three lines there, platform, board, and framework. And we can save that. And now if we try to do a build, what will actually happen is it will build two versions. It will build one version for the MKR1000, uh, which we've uh, already uh, see building down there already. And now look, it's starting to build a version for the uh, ESP32. And again, if it needed some extra files, in this case, it says, well, I need some platform files for the ESP32, it goes ahead and downloads those for you. So really, really easy, completely integrated. Every time you pick something new, it says, oh, I know how to deal with that. I'll go and get the files for you. So we'll just let that download and it will have then built the code for the ESP32 board. Okay, so it finally finished, and there you can see we've got the success. We've built the kit, the program for the MKR1000, and now also for the ESP32, both of them there marked as success. Now, if down here where it says default in the bottom line, you can actually pick which project you want to do. Default is build for everything, or you could just say, actually, I just want to concentrate on the, the ESP32 at the moment, so it'll only just keep building that one when you click on the build. Okay, so let's plug in the ESP32 board, and then let us um, flash it over. One thing to notice is that depending on your ESP board, you might need to kind of press a boot button or have it pressed and holding it down while you are flashing it over. Each board is a bit different. You need to just check the uh, website for the or the instructions for that particular board. So that's been flashed over. And as you can see now, I have a blinking LED on the ESP32 board. So good stuff. Okay, so the final example, here I have an STM32 blue pill, as they are called and I've actually got an ST-Link uh, debug module there. So can I use this with Platform IO? Will it understand an Arduino program downloaded over ST-Link? Sure it will. Now, one thing to note, this is actually a fake uh, blue pill. I didn't realize that until after it actually arrived. It's got the clone chip on it. We will have to just do one bit of configuration to make Platform IO understand the different type of chip. But besides that, it will work uh, as it is. So let's go over to Platform IO and, uh, and change the configuration so that we can talk to this board as well. So just as we did before, we go over now to boards and we're going to search for uh, Blue Pill. And that will give us the different variations that exist, the C6 variation, the C8, the C8 with 128K of RAM. I've got this one. Well, it would have been this one if it was an original. And this will open up the web page with, again, the platform IO information that we need. So I'm just going to cut and paste that, go back into platform IO. And inside my platform any file here, we're going to add in again that. And we just need to add in the fact that we're using the Arduino uh, the Arduino framework. Okay, again, that should now work. We will be able to go ahead and build that. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna change the default now just to be the blue pill so it doesn't rebuild and try to flash over uh, the other two boards that we're already working on. Okay, so I'm going ahead and building the version for the blue pill. Now, if we try to flash that over, we'll see that actually it will fail. And the reason is because this is the uh, fake blue pill board and they each have a hardware identification. If you look up here, it says it was expecting this code, but in fact, it got this code. So what we need to do is tell Platform IO that that other code is actually the one to expect. So you go over to your Platform IO um, uh, for any file there and you add these two lines at the end there, set CPU T APID, and then you use this new number, the one that actually it did find. And if you try to flash it over, then it will work. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. We can see that it says success. And now if we look at the board, we can see that we have an LED flashing. 
Just before we go, I just want to mention I do have an, a monthly email called the Gary Explains Newsletter, which covers everything I'm doing over here on this channel, over at Android Authority, and anything else that I found interesting from the tech and gadget industry. Just go over to GaryExplains.com and sign up there. No spam, just that newsletter. Okay, so that's it. So as I showed there, just simply how you can use uh, Arduino and all these things. Of course, you can use the other frameworks as well. I've been using the STM32 Cube framework via Platform IO to program the blue pill to do other stuff. So it's really, really diverse and yet it handles all of the stuff for you. So it's really, really uh, clever tool. Highly recommended. This is not a sponsored video, by the way, in any way whatsoever. I this just wanted to tell you that you know about this tool. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this look at Platform IO. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't rely on the YouTube recommendation algorithm because it's broken. Instead, it's best to just subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, and then you'll know every time I release a new video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.